How to reconstitute peptides. Reconstituting peptides can be a tricky business. It's a little bit weird. There's a lot of measurements going on. You're a little bit confused. You've never done it before. What do we do? Peptides come in a vial. They come in a little puck. They don't have any water in them. What do we do? Cooper, show me how to get jacked like you. Show me how to get sauced up like you. How do we do it? We're gonna get into all those things in this video right now. How do I put the water in there? You know, you buy a peptide online, typically it comes in a lyophilized puck. So it's a freeze dried puck of the actual um, chemical that's in there. And uh, it's at the bottom of the vial, which I'm gonna show you in just a second here. And you're like, how do I get the water in there? How do I make this and turn this into a solution that's actually injectable? Well, I'm gonna show you. Reconstituting is when you actually put in bacteriostatic water into the vials that the peptides come in to turn it into an injectable solution. All right, so let's hop over. We've got some supplies over here. I'm gonna show you what you need. I'm gonna show you how to do it and I'm gonna show you some of the best practices. All right, so here we are now. We are back. We've got our supplies. We obviously have your peptides. Wherever you get yours from online, they'll typically come in a bag or some sort of package. We've got our bacteriostatic water, which is our reconstitution solution. Uh, yep, and then we've got our alcohol. So isopropyl alcohol, 70%, 91%, either one is gonna work fine for all intents and purposes. And then we have a reconstitution needle. So um, unlike an insulin syringe, which is what you would actually be um, using to inject the peptides into your body, this is a thicker needle, which is better for actually reconstituting the solution, okay? So what you're gonna do, I'm gonna open these here, take these out, we're gonna start with this one here. So I've actually, this peptide is CJC1295 and epimorelin. So this is actually a combination peptide. We have a growth hormone releasing hormone and then the other one is a gross growth hormone releasing peptide. So we're just gonna remove that here We'll just do one at a time. So I'll grab one of these vials. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can really see that from here, but it's white. You can actually see the compound is at the bottom of this vial. So it doesn't take up the whole thing, but it's a little lyophilized puck down there. And um, obviously you can't do anything with this. You need to reconstitute it with this solution, which is um, distilled water. And it also has, I believe, um, what is it on here? I believe it's 0.9%. Um, It'll, it'll say somewhere on the packaging, but essentially what it is, is um, it's distilled water with about 0.9% alcohol in it. And so what we're gonna do here is, you really just need these three things to start. So I'm actually gonna put just a couple of these tissues down just to make sure we don't have any spillage and you know keep everything kind of safe and clean. So um, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna have you're gonna take, you can actually get these online. I think I got these on Amazon. These are, oop, and then I just drop it all over the place. Um, <laughs> these are a reconstitution syringes. So unlike the syringes that you're actually going to use to inject the peptides inside your body, which would be something like this, um, like an insulin syringe, um, those are not good. They've got a really, not good for reconstituting. Those have a really small tip. So you're gonna wanna get something like this. Um, this is a five um, milliliter uh, syringe here. So we take this, put this on here, and then we'll pull this off actually to expose the, the needle and the tip there. So I'll just re-put this on for right now and I'll get this ready. So the first thing we wanna do, oh, also you're gonna to wanna to grab cotton balls, forgot to mention that. Cotton balls, you can get away with using like paper towels or tissue or something else, but cotton balls are just best, honestly. They just get the job done a lot better. So what you're gonna do, take your rubbing alcohol and then you're just gonna, oop, dab a little bit on there, get some on there. Now what you wanna do is you wanna sterilize. So this is the important part. So I'm gonna first take off the cap. They have just these little caps. You can just pop them off of the boom and that just shot across the room um, and then uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take that cotton ball with the alcohol and you're just going to dab off that tip make sure that that is fully sterilized even though i know we just popped off a fresh cap it's still better safe than sorry better to uh, err on the side of sterilization okay so same thing on here we've got rubbing alcohol and we're just going to sterilize the tip there all right, perfect. So now what you're looking to do essentially is you are taking your uh, reconstitution syringe and you're going to suck up a certain amount of solution 
and then you're going to put it inside the vial and kind of turn it over and mix it around until it's fully dissolved and it just turns into one solution. So what we're going to do is I'm gonna pop this off, boom, and make sure what we're gonna do, I happen to know actually that these little vials from Peptide Sciences are four milliliters. So they're four milliliters in volume. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull back the plunger here to where it says four. Let's see, yep, right there on the line, four milliliters. And then what I'm gonna do is this is how you always do it. You invert. So if you guys can see that, I'm just gonna turn it upside down. I'm going to invert it. I'm going to then stick the syringe straight into the center there. Boom, okay. And then what you do is you push in the air, okay? So I'm gonna hold this, I'm trying to do this here. I'm actually gonna bend down a little bit. I'm trying to do this so that it's totally inverted and I'm gonna push in all the air. Okay, push, 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 push. Great, now I pushed all the water, or all the air in there rather, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release, and it's actually reverse pressurized. So this is actually going to, as I pull back my, I'm not even pulling back on my thumb. Honestly, I'm just releasing my pressure and it's just like filling up perfectly. Um, and I'm gonna let it go all the way back until the same spot we were at, which is around four. Perfect, right there. I'm actually gonna pull it back just a little bit farther because sometimes there's a little bit of air bubbles and stuff and you wanna actually push those out. So you're gonna wanna go back maybe a little bit farther than your desired uh, milliliter amount and then you're gonna flip it back over and then you're just gonna pull it straight out the top, boom. Okay, so now what you'll see, I don't know if you can see it from there, if it'll focus, but essentially there's a little bit, so we can kind of flick it. The reason you see them do that in the movies and in hospitals is they're, they're trying to get the air bubbles to go to the top, okay? So then what you wanna do, you can flick it, get the air bubbles up, and then you can kind of just push out the air at the top. And then what you should be able to do, I'm actually gonna push out the air, and then I'm gonna push out a little bit of extra water as well. And that's gonna make it so that my fill line here goes directly to the four milliliters. Perfect. Cool. All right, so then now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually put this syringe into the vial here, and now you wanna be careful because what happens is, I'm not sure exactly why, but there's a ton of pressure, typically inside these vials is what I've noticed. And so when you push this in, it's almost like gas is getting released from a chamber or something, and what you don't wanna do is you don't want to have all the water just shoot straight down onto the uh, puck and on the, the powder down here of the compound. Supposedly, you can actually damage the peptide by doing that. So we're not going to do that. Instead, what I'm going to aim to do is I'm going to go into the middle here. You'll see on the top, there should be like a little circle that indicates where the middle is. I'm going to go down in the middle, but as soon as I get the syringe down in there, I'm gonna like kind of push it to the side a little bit and then I'm gonna tilt the vial because what I ideally wanna do is I wanna let the water come out very slowly and just drip down on the side of the vial until it fills it up instead of just having it all shoot down. Because when I press this down in there, it's going to wanna basically just suck out all the liquid and just make it come out pretty quickly. So what I typically do is I'll put my finger on the side of the syringe and I'll kind of push it into the side, which is just locking it in place. I don't want this plunger as soon as, as I push it in there to just release all of the water. So kind of watch how I do this. I'm gonna put this in here, make sure you guys can see, but I'm basically just going to put this down in the middle and it started to release a little bit on me, kind of felt a little bit of pressure release. No worries, we're gonna go in. Okay, cool, so needle's in there. Now what I've done is I've kind of just pushed it off to the side and I'm kind of releasing it at a little bit of a, of a tilt. And then I'm releasing, and then now just super slowly, I'm releasing the water just with my finger and it's just kind of falling down onto the side of the vial. Um, slowly but surely and it's starting to mix um, at the bottom and again it's really interesting because these vials are pressurized so like right now it's actually like there's a lot of resistance with me pushing down on the plunger so it's actually quite difficult I might have to switch my positioning here because I don't know if my finger is strong enough to push against this pressure 
Water's still coming out, good. Now we're starting to get some fill. So what you'll what you'll do is you'll realize you'll probably have to start pulling the, um, you're gonna have to start pulling the needle a little bit farther out. You don't want the needle so far in that it's like touching the, the water obviously because when you push it out and then you let go, it's gonna start to suck up the solution and we don't, we only want this going out, we don't want this going back in. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm almost full there, but not yet, there's still some more. I'm actually gonna take a slightly different approach, kind of switch hands, because this is kind of putting some back pressure on me. I wanna to, want to make sure I can get all of this. So I use my thumb, which is a little bit stronger. Almost there. And we are almost there. Pretty much, that's good. Pretty much at the top there. I'm gonna kind of release a little bit, but we'll push a little bit more in there. Okay, it's pretty much filled to the top. I'm gonna release a little bit, Ooh, and it just kind of sprayed all, all over, honestly. <laughs> That's what'll happen, is as you kind of release that, you'll kind of get some spray, it kind of pressurizes, and then um, the rest of the water will kind of spray out of there. Honestly, you just do the best that you can. Um, sometimes it's gonna spray on you a little bit. I haven't figured out necessarily a much better way to do this. If you have figured out a much better, a much better way to do this, Go ahead and drop a comment below of how you like to reconstitute your peptides without it spraying or getting getting rid of the pressure release or whatever. Um, but that's just how I've done it. And then I'm not sure if you guys can see there, but at the bottom, you can see a little white patch. And then obviously, since this isn't completely, completely full with water, there's a little bit of an air bubble at the top, which is nice because it actually allows the water and the solution to move around a little bit. So what I typically like to do, because a little bit of that compound is kind of stuck on the bottom, is just gently, you don't need to like shake it aggressively, but just gently kind of roam it, like roll it around in your fingers, invert it up, down, up, back down. Um, and eventually kind of that air bubble will just, you know, wander around a little bit in there and just kind of create some space. And eventually you kind of you kind of get the situation where it will fully dissolve. Um, all of the white compound in there should dissolve into the water. You shouldn't be able to see it anymore and it should be totally dissolved and good to go. So other than that, that is it guys for reconstituting. Again, I'm just going to keep kind of pushing this around and rolling it around in my fingers until everything's perfectly dissolved. And then what you wanna keep in mind is that you don't necessarily have to fill this to the top. Um, you can fill it with less, like three milliliters of water if you want to. What you need to keep in mind though is that the amount of reconstitution liquid that you put in there is going to dictate the strength, okay? So obviously if I were to only put a few drops of water in there and it fully dissolves, the solution is in there is not gonna be very much, but it's going to be highly, highly concentrated. It's going to be very strong. Uh, versus if I fill it all the way to the top, you know, with a full four milliliters, I know that that solution, you know, milliliter for milliliter is going to be weaker. It's gonna be less concentrated, um, but uh, I actually like that. I would rather use a little bit more volume in my injections. Um, in you know to get the same dosage so that's what we're working with you want to definitely make sure that you know exactly how many milliliters of water you're filling in there because when you go to do your calculations later to figure out exactly how much you're going to dose um, in your syringe because again remember guys we have on the syringes here i know this is a little bit confusing if this is your first time but you have these units here okay so um, there's numbered units on here, and based on how much water you actually put in here, how much reconstitution solution you put in here, that's going to dictate how strong your doses are going to be per unit. So make sure you have that. I'll make another video based on the calculations, and there's a few peptide calculators and things like that you can use online so you know exactly what dosage to do and as far back as you need to pull uh, to get the right dosage. So. That is pretty much it for that video, guys. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and redo the same process with the rest of the peptides that I have here. Um, I've got another CJC 1295 with ipamorelin, and then just in case you guys are curious, I have AOD-9604. This is a really cool peptide um, that is supposedly able to facilitate and produce more lipolysis, uh, which is basically your body's uh, fat cells mobilizing and burning. So that'll be kind of for the cutting cycle of this, and um, this will be a little bit more for the you know growth hormone secretion and like muscle building, uh, you know, 
part of my, uh, my cycle here. The reason why I'm actually reconstituting all of these at once, all four, is for a very specific reason. So what you could do, because one of these vials of this peptide will probably last me anywhere from like four to six weeks. And so what I've done in the past is I've actually reconstituted one and then left the other vials non-constituted. And then at the end of the four or six weeks, whenever I need another one, I'll redo the process. Here's the thing and here's why you might wanna consider doing them all at once, which is what I'm opting to do this time. This reconstitution solution, and I believe all reconstitution solution, after you open it, it's actually only good, like the shelf life only lasts for about 28 days. So because I don't wanna to have to continue, and typically I don't use, like if I were to just, this is a 30 milliliter, I believe this is a 30 milliliter um, container. I'm not going to use all of it to just fill up one or two vials. So what I don't want to have happen is I don't want to um, use one of these, wait four to six weeks, and then it expires. I have to throw it out even though it still has water in it, and then I have to buy more for the next time. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just reconstitute all of my vials right now for the round for the cycle of peptides that I'm doing. And then I'll just go ahead and throw all the peptides in the fridge, leave them there, and then when I'm ready to go, when I need to move on to the next vial, I'm already right there, ready to rock. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that video, that breakdown of how to reconstitute your peptides. I know it's super confusing. Uh, maybe I breezed over a couple things. If you're confused about the process, just drop a comment, ask me a question, I'm happy to help. I'm also gonna make some follow-up videos of what you need to do after this and the whole step of the process from receiving your peptides in the mail to actually getting them inside your body and utilizing them for their uh, specific functions. All right, that's it. I'll see you guys on the next one.